Scripture reading today is taken from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 32. The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his heap. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's heap on the sinew of the thigh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hi, good morning, church. Good morning. Well, we are halfway through the sermon series, Family Reunion. We started with Abraham family, followed by Isaac family, and now Jacob's family. Let us pray as we explore God's word this morning. Father God, may your word this morning encourage us. May your word bring hope and assurance to us, especially when we are down. So Lord, speak and we listen. And may your spirit guide us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, church, in order to understand today's passage better, I need to walk through with you Jacob's feeling, his emotion, and the environment he grew up from the day that he was born all the way he encountered God in this wrestling. When born, Jacob is given the name Jacob, meaning supplanter. The word supplanter from Strong's Dictionary means to be behind someone, to come from behind, to circumvent, to hold back, and to defraud. And true to his name, Jacob deceived Esau and Isaac, as Esau said in Genesis chapter 27, verse 36. Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now, look, he has taken away my blessing. Have you wondered why Jacob did all these things? Jacob is not just a deceiver, he is also a loser. As also true to his name, to be behind someone. Jacob was a loser. His entire life, from the very beginning of it, he was a loser. No matter what he did in life, he was always outdone by someone else. This mostly came from his twin brother, Esau, who was born first and was given an inheritance from his father, Isaac, something that made Jacob extremely jealous. You see, Back in those days, being a firstborn son was very, very important. Why? Because people in those days were mostly just surviving. The firstborn was given all the inheritance, property, livestock, and so on and so forth, to ensure that the family wealth and the family name would continue. If families were to divide up 
all of their wealth equally. The future stability of this family would not be assured. I think about it. If we were just surviving on what we have and then we divide it up equally among our five sons, then we will have five sons with their families trying to survive on one-fifth the size of a whole that probably may not keep a family alive in the first place. And therefore, to ensure that the family wealth and the family name continue and stable, all of the inheritance was given to the firstborn son. The, either, the others would have to find their own way in life. In a very negative sense, they are left to survive on their own. Jacob just missed this inheritance, being born first, only by a second. He was born only a second after Esau, his twin's brother, actually holding onto Esau's foot as they were born. Jacob, from the very beginning, was a loser, no inheritance. Jacob lost out to, his, to Esau in many other ways too. Though they were twins, but Jacob was different from his brother Esau. We know of people how they just seems like they have everything. They have it all. They have wealth, success, talents, and good look. And it seems as though they are loved and admired by everyone. And Esau was that person. Esau was strong, attractive, and talented, one of the best hunters around. He was successful. He was going to have a great inheritance. He attracts many girls. Girls go for him. And because of all these things, his father Isaac loved him so much more than Jacob. Esau was Jacob's favorite son. By contrast, Jacob does not have, they have it all. He was weak and likely small in build. He did not do a lot of hunting. He was more comfortable hanging around the, the house with his mother. We call it mommy boy. Jacob did just did not measure up. He just was not really blessed by God with all these things that we consider blessing. Jacob not being blessed with much was the underdogs. All this, not just sibling rivalry, but also favoritism, frustrate Jacob and drive him to be very, very competitive. And he finally make out his mind and determined, I am going to do it myself, to overcome my situation and make my dreams come true, to earn my blessing from God. And this is really a big mistake that Jacob makes. And really, the same mistake that many of us make as well. Many of us believe if we really work hard for it, blessing will come our way. But if we think about it, the best thing in our life are just given to us. There are nothing we have achieved. But think about it, what are the things in our life that we cherish? Our family, our spouse, our children, maybe it is our talent, our ability and our look, they were nothing we earned. They were all given to us by God and we are blessed to have them. We cannot achieve a blessing. All we can do is receive them. But that was Jacob's problem. He may know the truth, but because of his frustration and disappointment, he chose to ignore it, and turn a deaf ear to it. Jacob tries instead to earn 
his blessing from God in his own way. Turning a blessing from God into a goal to be achieved. And what happened? This led him down many wrong roads in life. Parents see the importance of providing a conducive environment to raise your children. If siblings' rivalry and favoritism are not properly handled or managed, your children will also think and determine the way Jacob did. How did Jacob try to achieve his goal to earn his blessing from God? First, he cheated for his blessing. He tried to get it from his brother, who is in a sort of uh, in a desperate situation. Esau is extremely hungry after a long day of hunting. Jacob, instead of helping him, take advantage of the situation by demanding Esau inheritance in exchange for some food that he has. Esau fed up and frustrated with his brother and was hungry and he said, well, if you want it so badly, just take it and give me some food. Genesis chapter 25 tells us that Esau exchanges his future inheritance for a small meal of bread and lettuce stew. And Jacob become a cheat. Jacob also tried to become something that he is not. He tried to dress the part of attractive, successful Esau by dressing out like him to fool his old and blind father into giving him Esau's blessing. And it works. Isaac thinks Jacob is his brother Esau and gives Jacob Esau's birthright blessing as head of the family in the future. Jacob tried to earn what he cannot earn, earn him a few names, cheat, loser, and what else? Well, as we can imagine, all this action hurt his relationship with his brother Esau. Esau was very angry, and he said to this to his brother Jacob, Once that die, you are dead. What did Jacob do? He chickened out and runs away. And now he, we can add another name in the list, coward. But Jacob cannot run forever. In our passage, Jacob received word that his brother Esau is coming to meet him with an army of 400 men. One night as he was sitting there waiting for his brother to come to kill him, all alone, worrying that the sins of the past are about to catch up with him. Jacob has nowhere left to run. He cannot go back to his father-in-law. He cannot go forward. Esau is there. Literally, he is stuck. And it is at this moment, he is confronted by God. You see, my brothers and sisters, we can cheat Esau, we can fool Isaac, we can be something that we are not, we can run, but we cannot fool or run from God. God knows our real name, so to speak. God knows us, and God knows what we did and what we will do. The story says that Jacob began to wrestle with a man that we come to know as God. All night long, the two are in this struggle. Have you wondered why Jacob wants to wrestle with God? He can just give in. Everything will be over. Why does Jacob want to wrestle with God? Because he is lashing out his anger at God. He is letting out all that are within him to God. Remember, he is a broken man, full of hurt, frustration, and jealousy. He is also a tired man, burned out, striving very hard 
to receive a blessing from God and always on a run. When he meets God, he just lets out all that within him to God. As they like approaches, God dislocates Jacob's hip, but Jacob still hang on and demands from God a blessing. He cried out, Bless me. Interestingly, God responded by asking Jacob, Tell me your name. Have you wondered why God asked Jacob his name? I mean, God should know his name, right? What God is saying to Jacob is, confess to me who you really are. Now, Jacob's name means to be behind someone, a loser, or to supplant, or to cheat. How appropriate a name it is. All of his life, Jacob has devoted his energy to take what belongs to others. Jacob is nothing more than a fraud. I believe deep down, Jacob knows this. In the past, when he faced with who he really is, what would he do? He would chicken out and run away. But this time, interestingly, he does not run. He clings on to God tighter and confesses his name Jacob. Basically, Jacob is confessing, I am Jacob, I am a cheat, I am a fraud, I am a loser. And all of that has got me nothing but pain. Those names hurt. And I cannot do anything about it, but reach out and hold on to you, Lord. And that is his cry. Once Jacob cried out and confesses who he really is, Cling to God in the process. What does, what does God do? God does not punish Jacob. Instead, God blesses Jacob with a new name. And he calls him Israel, the one who has wrestled with God. Jacob limps away, carrying a new name and a new character, living life as a new person. In the chapter to come, Jacob and Esau not only reconcile, but Jacob also become the father of a nation. From his twelve son comes the nation of descendants that still bear his name Israel, even to this very day. And of course, from his descendant came the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Jacob is no longer a loser anymore, but a winner when he surrenders everything, his life, his will to God. The story of Jacob shows us that we human beings are complex people. There are times we display great faith, and there are other times we hardly believe at all. There are also other times we have great courage to face our struggle, the difficulty that we face, and other times we wimble away in despair. There are also times we are full of integrity and love for each other. And also times we hurt each other and do things that we know we should not do. And all these things that we mess up stick with us and even haunt us they are in our memory bank. Many a times we seek to start all over again. But in this world, second chances might never come easily. So what do people turn to now? Want to make a guess? The cyber world. Seek the social profile, online community, and virtual gaming for solution. Why? Because they provide an opportunity to seek a second chance in life and they call it second life. Second life is a virtual world that allows people to create an avatar for themselves and then interact with other users. 
Over 20 million people have created a second life character to which they can live in this new world. They are looking for another chance in life. Second life describes itself as a place to connect, to change yourself, to change your mind, to change your look, to be different. The virtual world is clear evidence of the longing of so many people for a fresh start. Yet in reality, not virtual, as we have seen in this passage, and not only in this passage, last week, Pastor Simon also affirmed that. He affirmed that our God is the God of second chance. And third, and many, many more. God gives us countless chances to turn back to Him and enjoy His love again. God does not just give us a second life. He comes to us and transforms our real life. God continually gives us second chances. Jacob was given a second chance. He was forgiven and went on to have a powerful ministry where through him, through his family, the saviour of this world was born. So my brother and sister, if we have fear, don't give up. Turn to God, be forgiven, and receive a new start. Seize a second chance from God. The real thing. Talking about seizing a second chance, second chance, are you in a crisis today? If yes, this is good news. God is up to something. You are about to be changed. You do not have to stay the same. God is getting ready to make a change in your life. Our passage teaches that the biggest struggle in our life is with God. Why? Because we want to be in control. We want to be God. And that was Jacob's problem. He tried to control his life. He wants to play God to such an extent that he even wanted to change the order of his birth. Jacob was a twin. Genesis chapter 25 says, when he came out of his mother's womb, he was clinging to his older brother anchor, grabbing to be the first one out. He spent a lifetime in conflicts with his brother Esau. But his biggest battle was with God. In our passage, our passage tells us that one night he even tried to go one on one with God. At this juncture, I want us to think of the biggest problem we have right now. It will come to our mind quickly. But regardless of what the problem is, I suspect it all boils down to these two issues that we need to grapple with. One, will I obey God in this situation and do what He says is the right thing to do, whether I like it or not? And two, will I trust God in this situation, letting Him handle it? No matter what is our problem is, financial, physical, relational, social or work, our biggest problem is not the problem that we are facing. The real problem is not obeying and trusting God. And that makes the problem bigger. Have we ever been in a no-win situation? Perhaps we are in one right now. Who do you think is behind that? God is. God often allows a crisis in our life in order to get our attention. All of a sudden, we are forced to lay flat on our back and we are forced to look up. God loves us just the way we are. But He loves us far too much to let us stay stuck in our habits, 
in our hangouts, and in our hurt. Like Jacob in our passage, God wants to change us. He wants to help us grow to be better, to be different, and to be all that we were meant to be. And so, God allowed a crisis. Why? Because we do not like to be changed. Because we rarely change until we feel the pain that exists our fears of change. We do not change when we see the good things. We change only when we feel the heat. Everything in our circumstance gives us the opportunity to get to know who God is from the outside in and what God means to us. It is really never about the destination, never about the goal we want to achieve, never about the wealth we want to acquire. But it is about us trusting God and allowing Him to shape us in time of discouragement and uncertainty. We all desire to get to want to get to know God better. But most of us, including myself, do not like to go through undesirable circumstances. God uses the tough time to show us something about Himself that we do not know or had not experienced before. God can use our situation to move us to where we need to be. A crisis gets our attentions and forces us to look forward to God. Pray about this. In what areas are we struggling with God? What situation in our life makes us feel restless and driven? Do we feel forgotten Nobody's care about us? Have we tried to make things happen? Is there deceit in any areas of our life? Have our relationship affected because of our striving and being competitive? Reaffirm our trust in the Lord. God's arms are wide open to hold us and help us settle down and find rest. This could be very difficult. Like Jacob, we may have to surrender ourselves, our competitiveness, our will, in order to allow God to have His way and in our life, in our relationship as well. So my brothers and sisters, seize the second chance from God, seize the change from God, and then what happened? God bless us. So seize his blessing. When God blessed Jacob, he promised to him land, multiply his family, and make him a mighty nation, and use him to bless the world. God made Jacob and his family God's chosen people, and through his family came the Savior of the world. But just like God does with us today, he gave Jacob a promise and then tested Jacob's faith in that promise. In our passage, Jacob struggled with God all night long in a a wrestling match that tested his patience, his faith, and his trust. Then God injured Jacob at his hip and gave him a serious disadvantage. Jacob was hurt and tired, and yet at dawn he still said this, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Isn't that an interesting thing to say to someone we are wrestling with? Apparently, sometime during this all-night struggle, Jacob became aware that the one he was wrestling with was no ordinary individual, but God. That means God could bless him. And so he refused to let go. Maybe we feel like we are wrestling with God right now and the struggle is lasting way too long. Maybe we do not want to do the things that God has told us to do, like acknowledging Jesus not just as our Savior, but also our Lord. Or God has told us to tie or to be kind to the 
people that we do not like, or to be committed to God through our service in St. John Chapel, or to be regular in our church attendance, or even in our cell group attendance, or to set aside time with God in prayer and studying His Word. The very God we are wrestling with is the one who gives us our dream for our life. He is the one who will make it happen. God is not trying to frustrate our dream. He is getting us ready for it. Our struggle will build our stamina, deepen our patience, and increase our resilience. Our wrestling match will also bring us to the point of commitment, our commitment to God. Right at the moment, when we think we have to give up, we need to turn to God and say, I am in this struggle as long as it takes for you to do your good work in me and bless me. That kind of response to God's test will show Him that we are ready for His dream for our life. What things in our life do you think God would want to bless us? What things are keeping us from His blessing? How does God help us when we commit to His work in our life, even when it is painful? In what ways has our struggle with God built our stamina, deepen our patience, or increase our resilience. Seize the second chance from God. Seize the change from God. Seize the blessing from God. Blessing only comes when we seek to obey God and trust in Him. Let us pray. Let us just pause and just allow the Word to minister to us as we reflect on what God had just said. Maybe some of us are going through some struggle in our life. Our passage reminded us, in fact, challenged us to seek God for the second chance. 